I changed dramatically as a person very quickly. It was astounding and wonderful and then quite horrific for a while because riding on the back of that, when you change so much so quickly, you can't relate to the you that was anymore. You can't relate to those around you. The viewpoint was that it was like I had been lifted up out of myself and got an overview of me, everything around me, relationships, how we create certain things, dynamics. I started getting what people now term downloads, energetic downloads. So it would feel like the top of my head opened and this jug of information would come into me. Hello and welcome to Good Journeys with Second Mountain. This is the podcast that shines a spotlight on inspiring people and their inspired stories. Please do join in the conversation with us on social media using the hashtag Good Journeys Pod and find each and every episode I am in full over at our YouTube channel via the Good Journeys Pod hashtag. I'm your host, Ben Veal, the founder of Second Mountain Comms, helping good people do good. And in today's episode, we'll be talking all about what it means to be happy. My special guest for today is Sarah Perrett, founder of The Happiness Gap. Sarah is a happiness coach and certified emotion code practitioner. As an energy worker who helps people to let go of all the trapped emotional baggage and energy they've been carrying around, Sarah uses the emotion code to clear self-limiting beliefs. Her driving purpose as an intuitive happiness coach is to help people to grow happy minds and live happy lives, one emotion at a time. Sarah, that all sounds great to me and just what our world needs right now. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Feeling happy? I am feeling happy. I am. Yes. And just feeling very abundant today and thankful to you for inviting me along to have this lovely chat. It's oh, about so time welcome. too. <laughs> Absolutely. We've been trying to set this up for a while, haven't we? We have. Yeah. We've got there. So look, look I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea of bridging the gap to happiness. Mm -hmm. What what do you mean by that as a happiness coach? Well, I've experienced in the past with myself and what I've seen with other people was I noticed that there was like this happiness gap inside of me years ago. And it was like a hollow, an empty, hollow feeling inside that I felt like I had to fill with things from outside of me. And I see that in a lot of other people. It's a very sort of human thing. We feel almost like we have to self-medicate when we're not feeling great. And, and it did feel like this big empty gap, this hollow. So bridging the gap to happiness is basically finding out, well, what is that hollow? What's creating that? Why, what thoughts, feelings, beliefs are creating that? What trapped emotions are creating that? And then working towards so kind of one emotion at a time, really, filling the gap. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because um, I, I know you've talked about kind of, um, on an emotional standpoint, you've talked about, comfortable feeling emotions and then you've talked about uncomfortable feeling emotions um so, so so what do you mean by the difference between the two and is it is it ever possible to fully shelve uncomfortable feeling emotions i use the term comfortable and uncomfortable to basically help other people change their perception of emotions because they they sort of get labeled positive and negative which in a way, it has negative connotations, and then it sets a person's mind down a pathway. And positive and negative is just an expression of opposites, really. It's polarity. It's, you know, in a battery, you've got a positive end and a negative end. There's not a good or bad end to a battery. It just is what it is. So I use comfortable and uncomfortable to kind of change people's mindsets. So when you're having a what you term a negative emotion, don't get rid of it. It has value. It just feels uncomfortable if that makes sense it does yeah so so yeah. I guess what what are the what are the comfortable emotions then I said the comfortable emotions are what I call the higher vibrational emotions so love bliss happiness optimism when you sort of feel calm that there's like a on a there's a scale of emotion which below a certain level they are heavier emotions they have a heavier charge to them and then there's a certain point where the emotions um, above where you start to feel content, as it contentment, mm. contentment and up, you're into the positive feeling emotional zone. Bliss, unconditional love and love is the highest form of emotion that you can have, basically. Mm. Um, 
And that is as opposed to the lowest feel, feeling negative or uncomfortable emotion you can have, which is fear, depression, unworthiness. Yeah, big big issues in, in society today. And, and, and one of the things I, I wonder is, you know, we're, we're all kind of searching for happiness. You know, that's it's what drives all the media messages you see. Every single advert really is about this quest for happiness. Um, you know, but I wonder, yeah. is, is, is the problem with this idea of happiness as but it's something that you're always searching and striving for rather than just appreciating it when it's there in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a gap again, isn't it? It's we're making happiness something that's outside of our reach, outside of ourselves. And then what you're doing is you're if you're just searching to be happy, you're wiping out all the other emotions. You're taking all their value away. You're living in a very conditional manner as well so you're saying i will only be happy when dot 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 i have the car the house the relationship the life the job blah blah fill the gap um which is fine it's it's good to aspire to move towards things that you want in your life but if you're only pinning your happiness on those moments those moments are often fleeting look forward to a holiday for six months then what happens when the holiday's over then what you know you Mm. what do you crash down emotionally um or indeed you so, don't even enjoy the holiday because you've put so much kind well, of pent, pent up emotion into it, it but when you're there you can't be in the moment and favor it yeah yeah because the whole time then you're on the holiday you're probably thinking well I've only got two weeks it'll be over soon and then I'll feel awful so um but it's being very conditional about I can only be happy when um so so letting go of that is a really good thing that you can do and embracing your other emotions. Um, Tony Robbins talks about, he says, uh, progress brings happiness, which I totally agree with. It's if you have a goal, that's a temporary win. Whereas mm-hmm. if you're looking at making progress in your life, that's the journey to get to a goal. So if you can embrace the journey, then you are always going to have a sense of happiness success feeling like you're doing stepping towards something good Mm -hmm. and also Aldous Huxley who is a writer and philosopher he said happiness is not achieved by the continuous pursuit of happiness it's generally a byproduct of other activities so uh, when we go into flow for example if we go into you know when you're in that childlike moment of you get it so into something you're in flow you're engaged you're all in you're just in that moment and loving that moment that can bring a whole lot of happiness as a side effect of being in that state yeah absolutely there's there's too much i think we're, we're just so rushing around all the time aren't we to try and get the next thing to to tick off the next goal to to be this person in the future and just not actually appreciating mm. you know where we are now um as a as a happiness coach I'm sure you have a better grasp on the concept of happiness than I do. Um, You know, what does happiness mean to you in your life, Sarah? I think it's very individual happiness. What makes me happy won't necessarily make you or other people happy. I like things like stars and sunsets. I can get blissful over a sunset. It can bring me to tears, which my partner finds absolutely amazing (laughs) and unbelievable. Happiness to me is expansion. So it's expanding. It's it's like it's open. It's this opening up feeling. It's yeah. feeling yeah. lighter, high vibe. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot to be said with you know being out in nature. Some of the, some of the best and happiness moments I've had of of pure connection and joy have been out in nature. I think certainly during that very first lockdown period of 2020, it was those trips out in nature daily that sustained me and brought me joy. And I've I've kind of found as as the years have gone on that I've become much better and a real believer in in kind of finding and intentionally crafting these kind of little small moments of of happiness or kind of little pockets of joy during the day yeah. um you know that that's that's something that got me through the pandemic it's something that I continue to weave into my work in life now just you know being intentional about it because if you're not intentional often it doesn't happen um a hundred percent the hundred yeah. percent you've hit the nail on the head there with intentional happiness and it's brilliant you know that you learned about crafting those moments a lot of people were forced into a place where they had to craft those moments 
and actually I, I, I started doing things as well. You know, that was where I really upped my game because we all had to, didn't we? And mm -hmm. two main things that I, I do actually, when you were sort of asking about my happiness, when I wake up in the morning, I hack my happiness chemicals. So I smile. I, I do a fake yep. smile like a, like this looks yep, crazy. Yep. And I'll do that, hold that for a little while. Um, and that can give you a shot of your happiness chemicals because your brain registers the muscle movement upwards. It doesn't know if you're happy or not. It just assumes you are. So it gives you happiness chemicals. So that's a, that I started doing that actually. That's every a great day. Um, like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because so that is a case where you actually can fake it till you make it because if you walk around you know when you've got days and you have to be happy around people you've got to go to work and sort of be smiley eventually it does take you over you yeah. do kind of get there um I find music is a massive a massive up leveler for me before a session I dance around my room here I look like a crazy woman I've got an uplifting playlist and I've anchored into those songs um which is an NLP thing I don't know if you've ever heard of anchoring but it's where you, it's being intentional again. I've intentionally found songs that when I listen to them, I feel all high vibe. Mm. And so um, so what I've done is that you can anchor, you can either, like you can make an action on your body. So you listen to the song, you get into the high vibe feeling, and then you can pinch your fingers together. Or you can like, you can't see me here. I'm rubbing my thighs. Okay. <laughs> it looks really weird. <laughs> anything you can rub the back of your hand and if so you like do that, it's like a mindfulness exercise it, kind of essentially, to a degree not kind of yes but not exactly you're actually anchoring a state of being okay into that you can trigger so when i've anchored into something anchored into my music then when i re-listen to the music it then I now I've reached a point I don't have to do my sort of squeezing my fingers together thing I instantly leap into whatever I'm feeling I'll limp, leap into the good feeling space I'll trigger that mood within myself I do it with smells as well I use essential oils a lot to to help my mood and I've got certain smells that when I smell them you know how emotive smells can be you know you yeah. have fresh grass summer days all that so that does trigger your limbic system to bring in uh, different in often more comfortable feeling emotions yeah so I actually have a a playlist um a, a, a playlist which I've added to regularly over the last three years called life is happiness which is specifically my list of songs that bring me joy and uplift me oh, um, wow. so I'm going to try that method that you said um, yeah. and see if I can see if I can be anchored through them I, I mean one, one thing I wonder you know that the pandemic was you know, or certainly the early part of those lockdowns was an interesting time of self-discovery for many of us. I learned a huge amount during that time of kind of pausing and reflection, albeit, you know, self, it was imposed on all of us, wasn't it, that time to pause and reflect. But but there were some real takeaways. And for me, my worry is that we've moved a bit too fast back in the old direction when actually that slower pace of life, I think, was very good and cathartic for many people. I mean, as a as a as a happiness coach, do you feel that we're maybe a bit cut off from our emotions because we're all living such busy, distracted, fast paced lives? In some ways, yes. And in other ways, no. Yes, that it, it's crazy now the amount of distractions that are going on. You know, I have to try and turn my phone off and, and be very intentional about that and and pair things back and keep it simple. I do also feel that we're carrying, particularly in the UK, we're carrying a lot of difficulty around emotions from the past. So you had the Victorian age, which seemed to breed this idea that emotions are not good and you shouldn't feel emotions, which it's not possible really to not feel emotions, but that we should cut them off, stuff them, you know, get rid of them, not show them, stiff up a lip, which in some in some um, cases, that's the right thing to do. But as a whole, our emotions are so natural that we need to be feeling them, processing them, living with them. So I feel that we're coming out of that zone now. We're learning that emotions aren't these awful uh, expression of weakness. They're not evil. They're good to embrace. And we all got shot into a zone during those lockdowns where all we had a lot of the time was us 
and mm -hmm. you could dive into those distractions you know a lot of people dove into social media and talking online so that was kind of a positive connectional way but a lot of people went within a lot of people went into nature a lot of people were isolated and all they had was them whereas that's never happened before and you can't go through that experience and not gain something some level of self-awareness some learning so although yes we have gone back to a bit of crazy. I feel that we've come back into it knowing that when you go in the crazy, it will have an effect on you and your emotions. And perhaps also having learned that, okay, if I go in the crazy, then I need to sort of empty that out by going for a walk in the sunshine or grounding myself with bare feet on the earth or listening to uplifting music. And I need to put limits on things. So it's like this sort of balancing act, you know. It's interesting. I feel, yeah, it does. It makes perfect sense. I feel a bit like, um, do you remember that scene in The Matrix with the red pill and a blue pill? I feel, I feel a bit like we had that. Like we, we briefly eyes were kind of open for everyone, but actually this pace that you were on. Some people thrive on pace. Some people love to have pack days. This kind of hustle culture mentality, get up early stay up late kind of work all the time but actually it's really interesting because for me I realized that actually I'm someone who works in really good small pockets of concentrated energy you know I can be very on for a couple of hours with a big group of people do networking things like that but then I actually have a bit of a crash and so what I've learned now coming out of that is to actually kind of protect my energy flow and mm -hmm. balance my I guess my more extroverted times with allowing myself to be a comfortable introvert and say it's fine to go off for a two-hour nature walk on my own in silence and just yeah. rebalance and to give myself the energy to then face what comes next whereas before I would have gone you know meeting meeting engagement meeting meeting you know non-stop full days packed diary 12 13 14 hours really not stopping and then yeah. I come home at the end of the day and under I couldn't really grasp why I was quite so destroyed really and it's because yeah. now now I intentionally craft points every single day seven days a week just well, to it... recalibrate and, and also find my creativity again just to kind of recalibrate and go okay have a bit of a breather take some time for me and then go back to it totally and that's become a lot more acceptable now whereas pre-pandemic that was the culture it was it it was it was sort of like expected there was for me personally, I felt in business, there was this level sometimes of inauthenticity where you were expected to put forward your best face and always be on and always be, you know, functioning well. And humans aren't that. We can't be that. We can't. We have emotions. Stuff happens, as we've realised. And so going through that experience together, I feel it brought this amazing... It, it stripped back the rubbish. It stripped back a lot of layers. I'm having interactions with people in business now I have never had before. I can talk to them about their energy, their emotions, taking off their shoes and walking barefoot on the ground. That would not... Have, that wasn't happening before, before that. So... So now things have become more acceptable and we've all had to focus so much on our well-being that that is an acceptable part of business now, which is fabulous. It's fantastic. So I know that you've been doing quite a lot of work with um, with business owners through the happiness gap over the last few years. What, what, what does that kind of work entail? What have you found through working with different business owners? Are, are there any kind of key themes that you've explored? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, a lot more business owners are coming to me now for sort of happiness coaching and emotion code um, as people have made this link with the wellness and that sort of area. And obviously culture, there's a lot of culture information coming out now. Look after people within an organisation and things go a lot smoother. But also I work with business owners to help them clear the energetic emotional blocks within themselves, the belief patterns, the mindsets, clear away all of that, which can put a big block on a business. You can even create abundance blocks when you have um, trapped emotional sort of toxic energies within you. So I work with them to clear that out, identify what mindsets they're holding that are holding them back. So an example of that could be a lot of people have difficult mindsets around money abundance wealth 
And it's very common to find a belief that money is evil, which sometimes mm. comes from, has generated with that person themselves through life experience, but often is coming through a family line. And that can really affect you in business because if your subconscious mind, which is basically your computer that runs you every day of your life, if that's holding this latent belief money is evil, then it's not going to think it's good for you and it's not going to allow money to come into your business. Mm. Um, no matter what you do, it's like a latent program that's just running in the background all the time. So if you release that belief, suddenly you can open the gates of abundance. And of course, also business owners, um, especially entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, we really need to look after ourselves because we're the captain of the ship. If the ship goes, if the captain goes down, the ship goes to and everyone mm -hmm. on the ship. So yeah, it's, it's keeping that mindset going, feeling more comfortable, feeling emotions and clearing away stuff that's holding you back that can support you in doing that. So I know, I know key to what you do is, is that you're a certified emotion code practitioner. So, so how does emotion code work exactly? What is it? It's amazing. I love it. Can you tell? I can. <laughs> um, you can see the book on my shelf at the back there. So um, the emotion code is uh, a methodology of identifying trapped, toxic, negative energy that's trapped in your um, your body and your energy field. So we believe that you're, you have a body and then you have an energy body as well. Um, like mind body spirit type thing and you can when you when events happen in your life if they're uncomfortable or challenging sometimes we feel an emotion around that event and our subconscious mind thinks it's important to hold on to that energy in our bodies as a trapped emotion which is a ball of emotional energy vibrating in your body somewhere um, the emotion code was created by dr bradley nelson amazing guy in the US he was a chiropractor initially and um, what he discovered was often when he did manipulations on his patients or his clients when he manipulated their body in some way so let's say someone had a back issue when he corrected the back issue often the person would have an emotional response and they would begin crying or they would have um, what often came with that was a memory of an event that had happened years before and, and it would just come into their mind and that would be released as well. So he investigated that over a long period of time. He looked at things like muscle testing, Chinese medicine, all sorts of modalities and formed this uh, way of working with energy called the emotion code where basically as a practitioner, I connect in with you, your subconscious mind, your energy, with your permission. I find, I ask about um, what an issue is. So let's say if someone's dealing with anxiety, I will ask your subconscious mind, is there some trapped uh, emotions that are contributing to this anxiety? I'll muscle test and I'll get a yes or a no through yes is a strong muscle test, no is a weak. And then your subconscious mind can answer yes, no questions. And by finding that anxiety, discovering when it was trapped, what created it, we can then release it from your energy field and we release it with the energy of intention. You intend and I intend that we're letting that go now. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, and, and you and I recently carried out a, a remote um, emotion code session with me, which I understand is something that you do you do often with your clients. And that that session happened to coincide with a particularly stressful day in my life It'd be really great if you could kind of give a brief summary of what you discovered through doing that session with me it was really interesting wasn't it because you were having a terrible issue in your house mm -hmm. was it with the uh with, with flo flo flooding, flooding. And, yeah 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 and did you say didn't you have like sewage coming up because there was local flooding things like we had that flooding we had sewage we had it all happening on a very very miserable cold winter day bless you okay yes that's very stressful yeah <laughs> so we were going to have a face-to-face -face session weren't we on zoom so you could experience what i do and obviously we we couldn't do that because you were tied up with a horrible situation so 
I asked for your permission. I, um, as a practitioner, we always need to get our clients' permission because it's very rude to go wading into another person's energy without asking. So you ask permission. And so I just connected to your energy and your subconscious mind remotely. So you weren't here. And I used the emotion code to ask your subconscious, your energy field, what's going on? You know, how can we um, relieve some of the stress that you were experiencing through that experience? And it was really interesting. So things came up. You had things like trapped fear, which had come from when you're about two, which is a very common one. You know, we're very impressionable at that age, which we release. You had inherited shock. So I, I release ancestral energy, which goes back through family lines. I'm a line stopper with energy. Um, it went back over 10 generations to oh, wow. the 1600s. And uh, there was like a whole backstory around that, which was quite interesting. So we released that. Uh, emotions are energy emotion. They're emotion. They have a frequency and an, a, a vibration to them. They vibrate in our bodies. So you had those two low level vibrating. And when things happen that can peak them, then they become active. Mm -hmm. um, I also asked about your house because I believe houses carry trapped emotions and energy from us as well. And why you were having experiencing this difficulty with your home and what came up was conflict. And it was a feeling of everything that had to come to was coming to the surface. You know, it was like, and it also actually literally, thinking, literally thinking back on it, he had been experiencing a bit of overwhelm recently, you know, a lot of things going on as lots of us have that. And perhaps as well, thinking back on it, your house was just expressing overwhelm. When you get overwhelmed with stuff, it all comes out all at once, doesn't it? Sometimes, mm. you know, it's like the you know what hits the fan all in one big go. So that was quite interesting. And um, just to go aside from that, what is another interesting thing, Louise Hay wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life. She talks about your environment and the appliances around you expressing what you're experiencing in any given moment. So wow. if your fridge breaks down or if your washing machine goes wrong or if there's a flood, then look at what's going on with you when when I was going through a very difficult period in my life and I couldn't move forward my car kept breaking down all the time I had the AA out all the time you know and when I looked at my life and reflected on that I couldn't move forwards in my life and my car I believe was expressing that in the physical world showing me look this is what's going on you need to sort this out it's fascinating I know there was there's another thing you, you picked up during our session wasn't there I think it was about feelings of um of lack which then fed into into overwork that really resonated that was another inherited trapped emotion that had come to you through your dad and came to him from his dad so your paternal grandfather had trapped lack of control and when I delve deeper into that and I delve deeper asking questions of the emotion code but also I'm an insight happiness coach so I connect in with who I call my my team my spiritual team um and get intuition around it and what i felt really strongly it was money tested positive it was around money and it was this feeling that your granddad had a lackful uh world view so he he was viewing the world through a filter of lack of not having i don't have enough sort of feeling um which was probably then having a knock on effect with money and then because he was having some issues around money, he then felt out of control because obviously if we don't, you know, if we have money pro problems, that's sometimes something out of our control. And he trapped mm. that feeling of being out of control. It's really interesting because I think that that money thing, you touched on it earlier with business owners, but it's, um, you know, we can, we can hold money up, at, you know, we can see money as an evil. We can also hold it up on a pedestal. It goes back again to that kind of searching for happiness, this eternal quest for, for wealth and for possessions. You know, that's very much part of this, this kind of second mountain ethos, which is the key to my business is trying to move towards the mountain peak of helping others and giving back and actually having a positive impact in society rather than accumulating status wealth and possessions because i think we've all seen that those things are largely meaningless they provide a short-term 
fix and a short term happiness beast and then you just go back to your status quo um so i think that i think the one on money is a is a very interesting one for our generation i think we've got a lot to unlock i'm sure that i'm sure what you've unearthed through through that with myself will resonate with a lot of people listening today like kind of very. inherited you know things have moved very fast in just a couple of generations and we're now supposed to have so much and do so much and experience so much and we're only you know we're only what 80 years removed from world war ii <laughs> and, from yeah. and, and you know the, the world has accelerated so much where if you if you don't have a foreign holiday or a latest kind of flat screen tv or the latest mobile phone there's this feeling of lacking um, yeah. whereas we have we just have this abundance in society now yet one would argue are we any happier or indeed are we actually unhappier yeah. than a couple of generations ago abundance is an interesting one and money is an interesting one because it's misunderstood people think money is evil they quote that but actually when you check the bible it says the love of money is evil so if if you're using money as your happiness and defining yourself and your status and all that then that's not really going to go very well for you ultimately probably but actually money in itself is a tool money is energy basically it's an exchange of energy isn't it we mm -hmm. do something and someone gives us money that's an exchange and money is just a tool it's what you do with that tool that makes it a good thing or a bad thing like an axe you can chop a tree down or kill someone with it you know so in my view money is a wonderful thing and if somebody I, I I believe personally it each of us has a responsibility to make as much money as we possibly can through our gifts and doing what we love and helping people and all that because if you have an abundance of money you can then give it to people that don't make the money if you've got that gift if you've got that way about you and hand it on yeah do Pay good with it do good with it yeah I'm I'm really um so this podcast is obviously all about good journeys. I'm really interested to to kind of learn what you know what was what was the journey to getting where you are today. What what led you to come involved in this world of happiness coaching? <laughs> Death, destruction, chaos, <laughs> all sorts. I could talk for a week probably, but I'll try and encapsulate it. So, growing up, uh, like many people didn't go very well for me lots and lots of things happened at home that affected me you know through my life in many ways we had a lot of death when I was a child in my family one of my relatives was murdered and, and lots of lots of all things sudden deaths and lack of money and um, things going on with my parents I was an only child so because there was a lot going on with my parents I was sort of just to the side sometimes Mm. where they were so focused on trying to sort things out with them um, and life things you know it happens with parents we get so absorbed in trying to sort our lives out sometimes so I felt quite isolated I guess a lot of the time yeah. not and unsupported I'm a free spirit I've realized I don't fit I don't fit systems so school didn't really go too well I'm creative so school didn't go too well I was the proverbial fish being asked to climb a tree by going to school and then thinking that I wasn't really very good at anything totally unlearned that one in later life but um and then my teens and 20s were chaos as I filled the happiness gap with whatever I could find to try and feel better in myself I was a very negative person I was often very entrenched in victimhood um, feeling like such and such did this to me they did this to me this happened to me blame excuses denial you know totally in bed blame excuses denial all the time and then when I married and had children there are a few challenges there I became very poorly with both my children with undetected postnatal illness and it wasn't really a thing back then I had my son Joel in 2001 and postnatal depression and illness wasn't there wasn't so much awareness it didn't really get picked up on so much so I kind of struggled on for a couple of years not knowing what was going wrong and feeling like rubbish and then it got picked up but I didn't really get the support I really needed looking back mm. and I didn't know what was going on I just thought I was a rubbish mum you know because I was struggling so much and then with my second son 
it became so bad, so, so bad that my mum was going to have me sectioned at one point. And my doctor uh, suggested me going into a mother and baby psychiatric unit because it was almost to the point of this condition that's called, per, per, I think it's purpureal psychosis, where you almost begin to hallucinate and see stuff. I wasn't quite that bad, but my my viewpoint on the world was not good. I uh, developed OCD, um, PTSD, vomit phobia, a whole range of things. In 2008, I just became so low and my doctor diagnosed me with ME, which is now known as chronic fatigue. And again, back then, there wasn't a lot of understanding and there wasn't a lot of support. I was just basically on antidepressants and told well this is it really this is kind of something you've got for life and that was really the start of my journey I just thought the way I'm feeling and thinking I feel that I've brought this on myself that's like a negative way of putting it but that's how I felt at the time in my worldview and so I began to read books about like Louise Hay, you can heal your life. I began to learn about emotions. I explored techniques like EFT, the emotional freedom technique that's tapping. Um, I actually used that to cure the vomit phobia. I just went on this whole journey of learning while I could and began to feel a bit better as I learned things and tried things on myself. And then um, my marriage sadly broke down in 2011. I became a single mum. And that was quite spectacular. Uh, it took quite a while. Um, and so my journey kept on through that learning, focusing on trying to support myself. And then I had a post marital relationship, which uh, in hindsight was with someone who had narcissistic tendencies. So I had that journey um, that took its toll. Mm. And it was on the back of that relationship where I just sort of went into a black hole of despair. I was like, enough now, what more? Um, but I was a single mum, two young children, and I wanted to leave the planet. I literally just didn't want to be here anymore. I, I was like the bottom of the heap emotionally in absolute unworthiness, despair, you know, uh, the dark hole, I used to call it. It was like I'd gone down a well right to the bottom. I couldn't get back up. But... Uh, I was the captain of the ship. I had my two little boys depending on me. So I had to be here. So I had to find ways to be here. And I, I brought out the big guns. I began meditating, learning Buddhist techniques. I went to um, mindfulness retreats with Tibetan monks and learned how to be mindful. Um, oh, I was just, I learned about Abraham Hicks. I heard, I heard of Abraham Hicks, who inspires me a lot. I learned about law of attraction what you think is kind of what you attract in often. I just did so much work. I was reading books at two o'clock in the morning, like consuming them, like like feeding a machine almost. It was really mm. strange. And then that culminated in me having a very unexpected, very sudden spiritual awakening at my desk one day where I changed dramatically as a person very quickly. It was astounding and wonderful and then quite horrific for a while because riding on the back of that when you change so much so quickly you can't relate to the you that was anymore you can't relate to those around you mm -hmm. it was in uh, 2013 and a lot of people are having this experience now of waking up slowly or quickly but there wasn't anyone back then that was going through that that I could talk to so I felt like I'd been lifted out of my life I, I couldn't have like the normal everyday conversations anymore with people. So you kind of I... felt disconnected from society and everyone that was around you because you were you were viewing the world in a different way now. Yeah, yeah. And it was the viewpoint was that it was like I had been lifted up out of myself and got an overview of me, everything around me, relationships, how we create certain things, dynamics. I started getting what people now turn downloads, energetic downloads. So it would feel like the top of my head opened and this jug of information would come into me and people, people would gravitate towards me and tell them all their problems. You know, a lot of people experience that, mm -hmm. which I love. I love people. I love helping. And I found that when that happened, the same thing would happen. It was like I stepped out the way and this information would come through me that was really helpful to them. And I'm inside of me thinking, how the hell do you know that? 
where did that come from? That's good advice. Oh, well done. It's like it didn't come from me. And my mum called it channeling. I, I don't know if it's that, but it was, it was like this new information. It was like I opened myself up maybe as a sort of channel mm. and raised my, I came in very quickly into empowerment viewpoint. Yeah. rather than victim and it opened up this whole world for me this more positive world if that makes sense so absolutely uh, yeah well that's a journey sarah that is a journey Incredible. that's just the heart that's just like a, a yeah little piece of it <laughs> and, what, and what does that kind of have that empowerment viewpoint now what does that enable you to do as a as a happiness coach you know are you able to see people who are maybe adopting that victimhood mentality and say i i get it i was there yes this is how you can turn things around and look at the world in a different way. Yes, absolutely. And don't get me wrong, right? I thought when I had that experience and I've seen Jim Carrey talk, say the same thing in some university talk he did. He had an awakening experience as well. I felt like this is it. Wow, I'm here. I've arrived. Everything's solved. I'm going to feel this way the rest of my life. No, it doesn't work that way. So I'm a human. Some days I go into victim mode. Some days I'm in empowerment mode. That's part of being a human being. I always learn things wherever I am. And, but yes, you know, I can say to my clients, I get it. I've been in that black hole of despair. It's a horrible place, but it's also an, a place of incubation. So I realize all those challenges I ever had, I came out of them better in some way, upgraded in some way, because when you're challenged in a very difficult way, you have to survive. So you've got to improve yourself, find information, or sometimes wonderful people come in and support you that you didn't even know cared about you. There's always a gift at the end of a challenge. So when I go into that place and when my clients go into that place of feeling victimized, I'll remind them and me, look, think about the gift. You're meant to be where you are right now. Yes, it's uncomfortable and dark and horrible, but the light's always there for you to walk towards. And in doing that journey, you learn stuff. You, you know, you grow as a soul, as a person. So, so it's yeah, it's a place of incubation when you're in that zone. So wherever you are is right. So, so what can our emotions teach us about ourselves then? Everything. Everything. Thing. The emotions like I said um, are emotion energy in motion they're a form of energy we're made of energy they move through us and sometimes they get stuck and sometimes they don't but emotions are your um, emotional guidance um, which is something that Esther Hicks talks about your it's so that you have an emotional guidance system your emotions show you what you're thinking so if you think a thought and it's you know I'm not good enough then your body will kind of tell you something's out of balance here by making you not have a very comfortable feeling emotion you know you might feel unworthy or you might feel depression or anxiety whatever that's telling you something's uh happening here it's showing you what you're thinking basically mm. and giving you a chance to change it or not change it it's it's divine guidance so I, w I was kind of like to leave the episodes if we can with a bit of a practical takeaway and obviously this is such a big topic and we've covered so much ground today but um I'm thinking particularly over the last couple of years I think everyone whatever their circumstances has been on this real emotional roller coaster and you know I, I pray we're, we're moving towards a little bit more societal stability now um but there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of emotional lessons to unpack there um are there, are there any kind of, I mean, I know you've talked about kind of anchoring and grounding and various kind of techniques. Are there any, is there any kind of practical advice that you could leave our listeners with to begin their journey towards being more in tune with their emotions and journeying towards happiness? I've got a list, actually. There's so much that I could, we could do a whole episode on this. I would say number one is if you want to get if you want to start to become master of your emotions cover off the basics eat good food drink the right amount of water get the right amount of sleep and get out and get fresh air that doing those things getting those covered off supports your physical body and if your bo physical body feels supported then 
it doesn't need to your subconscious doesn't need to give you emotions that are kind of more an indication of imbalances in your physical body be intentional about happiness as you mentioned treat it like a gym realize that you can actually change your level of happiness by about 50 percent so there was a study done and they uh what the lady i can't remember her name but what she came out with was around about 40 percent of our happiness is inherited it's in our genes kind of thing it comes with us 10 percent of our happiness is environment when we're growing up but that leaves like um 50 40 50 percent that we can change we can do stuff intentionally so definitely do that um <clears throat> accept all your emotions all of them they're all guidance not just the comfortable feeling ones I had an instance where uh, where I was going through that deep, dark depression years ago as a single mum. And I didn't have any energy. It was like all my life force was drained out of me. I, I had a point where I wasn't getting up, wasn't washing, didn't put my face on. Even the things that I enjoyed, like watching telly or reading, didn't interest me. And anyone that's had depression knows that feeling. It's mm -hmm. like there is nothing that will make you feel better apart from sleeping. Um. And it's hard for those around you because also there is no interaction. There is nothing that anyone can say or do to move you on from that, that dark this is period. It. That's it. And your vibration, your energetic vibration is very sort of very low, very heavy. And I was, ju I just learned about the scale of emotion, which if anyone wants to look it up, that's from Esther Abraham Hicks. Um, and it's an actual scale of about 22 levels of emotion. You can identify where you are and intentionally use that scale to change by thinking different thoughts. So I realized I was right on the bottom, number 22. And I thought, well, if I could just mo move up the scale by about three, that's anger. So I intentionally started to think angry thoughts about what had gone on with my ex-partner. And it just didn't work. But I just kept like remembering things and trying to find that anger in me. And it took about four or five days, but I woke up on about the fifth day raging, literally raging with anger. And it was the best feeling I've ever had in my life because it was energy. It was very energetic. I cleaned the house. I put my makeup on. I did my hair. I was defiant. I got stuff done. So to go from feeling so low and drained to that felt great. Well, it's having um, fire in your belly, isn't it? That's, oh, that's, that's, yeah. yeah, everything, I did everything angrily. I hoovered angrily. I put my face on angrily. You know, I cooked angrily. But I also realised, okay, and, and that showed me the power that I intentionally did that. I made that happen. And then I thought, but I can't stick here. What can I think now to jump up the scale, like jumping up the ladder again? And I looked up and above that is disappointment. So I thought, can I think about, you know disappointing things oh well it didn't work out how I wanted things like that and I did actually leap a few more and I ended up a few days later I, I kept doing that thinking up the scale I literally got to the top of the scale which is bliss um, passion love and the world I, I went from being contracted and small like this to open loving vibing out great things started happening all those lovely happy coincidences happened and that taught me a lot so yes you can use guide identify thoughts that are giving you uncomfortable feeling emotions question them is that thought true am i rubbish no probably not i'm not really some things i do are rubbish maybe but no start to question start to sort of think better feeling thoughts um and use my happiness hack of smiling yeah definitely oh and a really good thing so an exercise and one more thing to know you are always happy always if you think of happiness as a scale from one to ten let's say one being really low ten being like over the moon you're always on that scale of happiness somewhere you might be a one when I was in that deep, dark hole, I was the one. There was some happiness. I could have found some happiness somewhere, but it was very low. So you're always on the scale of happiness. It's not something outside of you that you have to get to. You're always there. 
um, and a little exercise that you can do to become a, uh, bring a little bit more happiness in. Write down the statement to bring 5% more happiness to my life, dot, dot, dot. And write down some things. There could be little small things you could do that would just notch you up a little bit. Maybe there's a job hanging over you that's actually affecting your self-worth and confidence. It might be a stupid little job, but because you haven't done it and you've procrastinated about it, it's beginning to affect how you feel about yourself. And in doing that job, suddenly your self-worth will shoot up and you'll you'll feel kind of better. Yeah, and procrastination is a is a is a real cause of you, know, you kind of see that, don't you, when people are in a bit low when you're a bit flat you just procrastinate and turn over tasks whereas i find whenever i'm whether whenever i'm functioning at a, at a at a high level of happiness i am so productive i can just saw through things because you lose that you lose that self-doubt that indecision and you can just make decisions that's so empowering sarah i think i love the idea that we have the ability to boost our happiness by 50 percent. i love the idea of looking at this in terms of small incremental changes that you can make day on day because that is where a you know, that's where a good journey begins at the end of it is just intentionally trying to get a bit better than you were before. It's um, your mountain, isn't it? It is your mountain. It's your mountain that you climb every day and you don't always climb uphill every day. But as long yeah. as you're on a journey and as long as you're moving in the right direction, you've got intention, then that's what matters. I'm sure there'll be lots of our listeners today who want to let you know what they think about today and get in touch. What's the best way to, to contact you, Sarah? If you go to thehappinessgap.co.uk, that's my website. I'm also, I'm on Instagram. I have to be honest to say I'm not great. I'm not a great social media person, but I do go in and put little videos and things on there. Um, I think you can find my Instagram through my website, but I think it's the Happiness Gap HQ on there. It's interesting, and- but as a happiness coach, you don't spend that much time on social media. I think that's quite a <laughs> maybe not particularly surprising that you're your would you say you're mindful about your use of of social? Sometimes I am, but actually, if it doesn't feel good to me, which often social media doesn't feel good to me to do, then I won't do it. So when I need to do it, I will do it in a moment where I'm a genuine I sort of I'm feeling something. I'm feeling the need to express. I'm feeling the need to put a video out. Um, or sometimes if there's I feel I need to support some people and just put out some certain information I will but yeah yeah I do I try to be a little bit intentional about it but well look I am feeling a lot happier having had this conversation with you today oh good I think think the (laughs) take the takeaway for me is intentional happiness and you know moving forward with with purpose towards having a a better more intentional um view of life really and just trying to be a bit more positive each and every day yes but also very very important is learn to be happy even when you're not so learn to feel happy no matter what emotion you're feeling they're all very valid they're all messengers they're like weather emotion emotions are weather you know you don't sit here and go no it's a rain cloud i'm going to be stuck in a rain cloud for the rest of my life you look out and you think oh that's a bit rubbish oh well i'm hopefully the sun will come out later treating our emotions in the same way is is very empowering and sort of very healthy yeah as 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 charlie mackesy would say that storm will pass and storms yeah. always pass in the end so true yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. Well, thank thank you so much, Sarah, for being such an open and brilliant guest today um, on the Good Journeys pod. Um, and I hope everyone comes away from today feeling just a little bit happier and asking the questions uh, that will help them on their path to a, a happier life. Um, so that was my, my my brilliant guest today, Sarah Perrett from The Happiness Gap. Um, if you've liked today's show, then please do share it with others. I think this is such an important conversation. So if there's anyone you feel could benefit with it, please do pass it on. Um, and don't forget to let us know via the hashtag across all social media, which is hashtag Good Journeys Pod. You can find each and every episode of the show via our website, which is secondmountaincoms.co.uk forward slash podcast. Every video can be seen on YouTube and you can listen to the audio across Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and anyone else that you turn to for your podcasting fix. 
So that's it for today's show, all about happiness. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been the Good Journeys with Second Mountain podcast. So until next time, let's keep climbing together and I'll see you all again soon.